Salutations crustaceans, I'm Lobster and today we're reviewing the Sire Marcus Miller P10, the flagship P-series bass from Sire Guitars. Let's do this. This is the P10 from Sire Guitars. I purchased this bass directly from Sire at an artist discount, and I've already done an unboxing video as well as a tone capacitor mod uh, because I was unhappy with the performance of the tone control on the Sire preamp and wanted to do something about it. So this has been slightly modified with the tone cap as well as some Hipshot Ultralight licensed tuners uh, to improve the balance of this bass. I thought the stock tuners were a little on the heavy side. However, a set of hip shots definitely rectify that issue no problem. Let me start by saying I absolutely love this bass and I find myself playing it a lot. Like a lot, a lot. The roasted maple neck, the flamed roasted maple neck with these gorgeous inlays and lacquered fretboard is an absolute peach. It's gorgeous. And this flame maple veneer. This is a paper thin flame maple veneer. However, it's a beautiful veneer, but it is a veneer nonetheless. It is a maple top topped with a veneer. So you have an alder body, maple top, flame maple veneer, which is paper thin. Uh, that being said, I mean, it looks the part and it gives you the illusion of having a flame maple top that's thicker. However, I think that's a bit deceptive. They say it clearly on the website though, so they're not trying to fool anybody. But if you're looking at this instrument at first glance, it looks like it does have a thicker flamed maple top, but it's really just a veneer on top of a regular maple top. Okay, now that I've said how much I love this bass, I gotta say I absolutely cannot recommend this bass for someone to buy at full price. This is a $1,500 instrument, whereas most of the sires which I've raved about are in the four to $600 range, this one is $1,500. One of the most expensive sires you can get right now. At first glance, it definitely looks very premium, but there are some big red flags here that really kind of irk me, and I I'm gonna go over those today. The first is the hardware and the electronics. This is the same preamp and essentially the same pickup set as well as bridge and tuners as you get in the P7. I know the pickups are listed as a different type of pickup, but there's no real information on what the difference is. Even if there's a very slight difference in voicing, overall what you're getting from a P7, which is around $600 to $700 or so, versus this bass, which is $1,500, you're not getting a whole lot electronics wise. There's n barely any difference. That being said, the preamp works nicely with these pickups and this is a great sounding bass. Honestly, I think the P7 is one of the best sire values out there versus the V7, which is more overshadowed, I guess, by the uh, V3 and the V5. With the introduction of the P5, which is a passive P bass, um, the P7 might have a bit more competition, but I think the P7 itself does a better job of differentiating itself among the lower end sires than the V7. So yes, hardware wise and electronics wise, you're getting a P7 here. There's nothing that spectacular to warrant the huge price jump. The body itself, again, is just using a paper thin flame maple veneer and a thin maple top on top of that and then you have an alder body. The neck is the showstopper here. This is a beautiful neck, a gorgeous neck, a comfortable neck. The tuners again I did not like and I replaced those with hip shots and I felt that was a big improvement. I think at the $1,500 price point this should come with some hip shot tuners. Other than that the 34 inch scale 20 fret fretboard with the Beautiful abalone inlays, honestly. This is a beautiful neck. Is it worth the $1,000 price jump from the P7? That's for you to decide. Both of them have the rolled fret edges and they feel very premium. Now, I don't have a Gen 2 P7 here, but I do have a Gen 1 P7, which does not feature the rolled fret edges. And you can find secondhand for, I would say, around 400 or so dollars. Um, that being said, it has the same bridge as this bass and probably very similar pickups. We may be doing a small comparison in another video, but for this video, I'm just going to feature the P10. 
Now before we play this bass, let's just turn it around really quick and check out the back. Starting at the bottom, you can see the string ferrules that go to the bridge where you can string uh, through the body as well as through the bridge. This is an option on pretty much all sires, which is a welcomed option. However, this doesn't really differentiate it from the lower end ones. You also have a large control cavity here. Uh, most of the other sires are front routed because they're using large pick guards. They're more vintage inspired, but this one is rear routed. You also have the battery cavity, which is using a wooden cover instead of a battery door. The Gen 1s had battery doors, and I think they should have kept the battery door and just gone to a better design, but I hate this. I hate this so much. Uh, you have to use four screws to get in there, and there's a foam insert that goes into the smaller battery cavity, so you have the... the cut out here and then there's a, a smaller cutout inside there where the battery goes in and there's this foam insert that creates some suction that makes this thing almost impossible to get out and I was ugh, so frustrated trying to uh, get this open the first time. Please bring back the battery doors, please! Moving on to the neck joint, you have a four screw fender style neck attachment and then the, you can see the beautiful flame on this roasted maple neck. Up at the headstock, you can see the modification that I did with the Hipshot Ultralight Licensed Tuners. They're really not that expensive, and honestly, for the price jump that you're getting between this and the P7, I would expect some more differentiation instead of some hand-me-ups. Now, I know you guys are wondering, how's this bass sound? You guys know what you need to do. Go ahead and push that like button so my hand will turn back to normal. Thanks. First, here's both pickups together with the preamp centered and the mid frequency control centered as well, but that does nothing at center, but just so you know. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and cut the preamp, see what happens. Yeah, so this is a very powerful 18 volt preamp and cutting everything kind of neuters the instrument a bit. That's okay, let's go ahead and boost the bass and the treble to 50% boost, keeping the mids cut all the way, and we'll play with this mid frequency selector a little bit. So that was with the mid frequency control centered. Let's go ahead and bring that all the way down. So turning that control all the way down with the mids cut means that you are cutting the lower mid frequencies and only leaving the higher ones. This is what that sounds like with both pickups and gauge. And now let's go ahead and turn the mid frequency control the other way. And now we are cutting out or removing the high mid frequencies and only leaving the lower mid frequencies so you get a bit more meaty boominess. Very nice. Now let's go ahead and boost the mids to about 50%, center the mid frequency control, and bring the treble and the bass down to about center. <laughs> Now 
let's turn the mid-frequency control down, which is going to boost the lower frequencies, kind of opposite of when the mid control is in full cut. So depending on which way you have it, the mid frequency control is going to do different things. Here's what this sounds like boosting the lower frequencies. And now let's boost the higher frequencies. Very nice, very nice. Now let's go ahead and move over to the P pickup and let's solo that. Here's the P pickup with the preamp centered. Not too bad, not too bad. Now let's go ahead and cut everything, see what that sounds like. It's, it's blah. <laughs> yeah, so preamp, full cut, it really, re really takes a lot out of it, but we're gonna go ahead and boost the bass now to 50% and boost the treble to 50% as well, keeping the mids cut and the mid frequency selector centered. Let's go ahead and bring the mid frequency selector down. So we're going to be cutting the lower frequencies, only leaving the higher mids. And here's the mid frequency control turned all the way up. So now we are cutting the higher frequencies and leaving the lower mids. Now let's boost the mids to about 50% and center the mid frequency control and center the bass and treble as well. Let's go ahead and turn the mid frequency selector down. So we're now going to be boosting the lower mids. And let's boost the higher mids now. Now let's center the EQ one more time and go over to the bridge pickup. So this is a noise canceling J pickup. However, noise canceling J's definitely lose their single coil high end, at least a little bit of it, depending on how they're configured. Uh, that being said, in a PJ configuration, I always appreciate a hum canceling J pickup. That means you're always gonna have a quiet experience versus with a single coil, you're always going to get single coil hum in a noisy electrical environment. 
uh, unless you're only on the P pickup. So anytime you're using the J, you will get hum on a single coil. And this is hum canceling though, so that is good. So here's what the J pickup sounds like with the preamp centered and the mid frequency control center too. <laughs> Now let's let's just go ahead and boost the bass to about 50% and boost the treble to about 50% and cut the mids, leaving the mid-frequency control centered. <laughs> Now let's cut the lower mids and leave the higher mid. <laughs> And now let's cut the high mids by turning the mid frequency selector all the way up and leaving the mid control all the way down at full cut. <laughs> Next, I'm going to boost the mids to about 50% and center the bass and treble controls as well. Now let's turn the mid frequency control down with the mids boosted to 50% and boost the lower mids. <laughs> Now let's turn the mid frequency control the other way, and we're going to be boosting just the high mids. Now let's center the pickup selector, center the preamp, and let's see how she slaps. <laughs> Yeah, with the Marcus Miller name on the headstock, you'd expect a bass to be able to slap, and this bass slaps, yes. Yes, it does. Especially with both pickups engaged, I think it has a great slap tone. Here's just the P pickup now. <laughs> And here's the J pickup. And finally, let's go ahead and throw some drums behind this bass. Thank <laughs> you. 
So here are my final thoughts on the Sire P10, the flagship P-Series bass. At first glance, this looks extremely premium and it plays like a very premium bass as well. However, with so many hand-me-up parts from the lower models, which are priced much lower, I can't recommend this instrument at the $1,500 price tag. It's a great playing instrument, a great sounding instrument, but it's essentially a P7 and the P7s are nearly $1,000 less. You could actually buy a P5 and a P7, once the P5s come out, and swap the necks and you'd have a P10 essentially without the flamed top. Now in terms of the flamed top itself, again, it is a very thin veneer. And this is the same type of flamed top that you get in the Sire U5, which is $500. Don't get me wrong, that is an excellent base. And to have a flamed top at $500, makes it a very premium looking base as well. At the $1,500 price point, you gotta do more than just a paper thin veneer here. Um, that combined with the hardware that is the same on the lower model P7 and the knobs, which are probably the only premium looking thing here, but you get these on the M series as well as the, um, I believe U5 has the same type of knob. So overall, there's really not much differentiation here besides the fabulous neck. And this neck is absolutely fabulous, don't get me wrong. The tuners, as I'd mentioned, are also the same type of tuners that you get in the P7. And I replaced those with some ultralight licensed tuners, which were relatively inexpensive and a pretty easy mod to do. I noticed a big difference in balance. Um, it is a much better balanced bass now, not to say that it was poorly balanced or overly neck heavy. Uh, that being said, I do wish they included better tuners on a $1,500 instrument. The one last thing I want to touch on is product differentiation. There is very little other than the aesthetics to differentiate this bass from the Sire P7, which again is nearly $1,000 less. Don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful flamed roasted maple neck. It's absolutely gorgeous. But is it $1,000 extra gorgeous? I don't think so. And in the hardware and the electronics department, you are seeing a lot of stuff that you get in the lower end model just brought up to the higher end. Uh, and I don't necessarily like that. I wish that Sire would employ more unique touches to this particular instrument. I noticed that the M5 has a much superior high mass bridge versus this, which just appears to have fatter saddles, but is the standard type of Sire bridge. Um, on top of that, the tuners again are the standard Sire tuner that you get on the P7 and the pickups. There's not really a lot differentiating these from the P7 pickups. I haven't seen any documentation really saying otherwise. What I would like to see out of a future P10 is replacing this jazz bass pickup with the humbucker from the M7 and M5 and the three-way toggle switch to allow for a single coil, parallel, or series mode on that humbucker. That would differentiate this from the P7 by giving you a unique pickup configuration. That combined with the aesthetic upgrades and perhaps some lightweight tuners and maybe a, a more high mass bridge, but that's nitpicking. This is a fully functional bridge, don't get me wrong. That would differentiate this more from the lower end models. But as it stands right now, I really can't recommend this instrument. So what am I gonna rate the Sire P10? Yeah! I'm gonna go ahead and rate this bass Two claws out of five. At $1,500, there's really not that much differentiating this from the lower end sires. The preamps are the same, the pickups are mostly the same, 
The body shape is the same. You can get a flame maple top on a $500 sire, so the flamed veneer here doesn't really differentiate it so much. The roasted maple necks are found in the V5, P5, and D5, and they're gorgeous there as well. However, you do not get the abalone inlays. So there's really small things that differentiate it here, and I don't think they differentiate it enough to warrant the $1,500 price tag. That being said, I've given my suggestions. Uh, Sire, I hope you listen to them, and I would love to see a revised P10 that takes some of those into account because the neck feels great, and I just wish that this was more different than what you get from the P7, and it's really not right now. That being said, I absolutely love this bass. I find myself playing it all the time. Uh, I use it on recordings and stuff when I'm just uh, messing around. It's a very comfortable bass to just play, and I think Sire's always done a great job with their necks, making them playable and comfortable, so no gripes here. My only real big gripe, and it is a big one, is the use of the lower end hardware and the lack of product differentiation here. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, subscribe, join our Discord, and leave a comment down below and let me know what you think about my Sire P10. And as always, until we groove again.